All right, so I don't know if you can see this. You probably can't, but I have the server sitting right next to me, or at least the computer that is going to be a server sitting next to me. And we need to boot into the BIOS and configure a few things. All right, so while the machine is booting, you need to hit F10 to go into the BIOS. We need to make sure that virtualization is enabled and that we have secure boot disabled. Oh, oh. All right, so here we need to go to security. Uh, just disable as much of this as possible because it's just going to get in the way. So if we go to advanced, let's go to boot options. We need to disable fast boot, network boot, and there's one other option. Okay, so secure boot configuration here this is where we need to make sure that we are in the legacy support enable and secure boot disable you need to make sure that this is set um, i ran into issues earlier with this all right let's go back and just make sure that virtualization is enabled so in the system options we need to make sure that uh, virtualization vtx and vtd are enabled and then just enable all of your PCI Express make sure everything is enabled especially turbo boost so once you have this set up you will need a bootable USB drive now this USB drive I already set it up but what you need to do is you need to go to the Proxmox virtual environment download page and download the ISO file and make a bootable disk or a bootable USB off it. Now I have Ventoy in this drive, so I just needed to download the ISO and save it to the to the drive and I was set. So we're gonna plug this into the computer, to the machine, and we're gonna go save, changes, and exit. Then while it's booting, it's gonna apply the changes that we made and let's go back and set that USB as our bootable drive. All right, so now that we have rebooted into the BIOS, let's go to boot options. We have the M.2 SSD as the primary, but we want to actually boot into the USB first. So let's move that priority up, hit enter. All right, that should be good. So make sure that USB is on top and we should be able to just reboot and it will boot, save changes and exit and it will reboot into the USB drive. Yes. So by doing this, we don't have to guess which is the boot options menu and hopefully it will work. If not, we're going to fix it. Oh, look at that. So we have booted into Ventoy. Uh, as you can see, I have a couple of operating systems here, but the one we're interested in is the Proxmox VE. So we're going to click on that and we're going to go into normal mode. Make sure that you are connected to your home network so that it can get an IP. This is something that I should have said earlier. Also, if you have a, a, a mouse and keyboard, you should have plugged that in as well. I forgot to say that. All right, so we need to agree to the end user license agreement. Um, I don't have a mouse. I think I just I can just hit tab and agree. Enter. OK, so here we need to select the target disk that we're going to install Proxmox It's just going to be our NVMe SSD, which is already selected. So we can just go next. We need to select a location and time zone. So I am in the United States and I am on East Coast time. And for that, we use normally America slash New York. All right. This lets us the server know that we are in East Coast time. Uh, keyboard layout is going to be English. So we can just tab and tab and hit next. I don't know if you can see it because I do have a bubble with my face on it but the previous and next button should be visible. So we're going to click next. 
Here we need to set up a password. Make sure this is going to be the password for the root user. So make sure that you remember it. Now for an email, you need to put an email. It doesn't have to be a valid email. So I'm just going to do code fallacy at code fallacy dot com. Who cares? Next. All right, so it did detect our interface properly, ENO1 or ENO1. Okay, we need to give it a host name. Uh, I'm just going to say code fallacy <laughs> dot host, I guess. Maybe, do I need a, a dot in it? I don't know. All right, we're going to have IP26. This is why I recommend that you have your internet connection hooked up to it. Um, just leave the gateway as normal and then click next. Oh, okay. So the domain name, I'm just going to put code fallacy.com. I think it needs to have a dot in it and then next. And then this is a summary of the installation. So I'm just going to click install and it should take a couple of minutes to install. All right. So once it installs, we need to be able to boot into the BIOS once again and then just remove the USB priority booting. Okay, the installation was successful and it's prompting us to boot. So it is going to automatically reboot. So when it does reboot, make sure we go back and hit F10. So right here, F10, so that we can remove that USB as the boot priority. Now, do we need to do that? Probably not, I could just yank it, but because we're going to be adding USB peripherals to this server, I don't want it to boot in the future unintentionally from the USB. Oh, look at that. It did it for us. So this is an unnecessary step. So we can just exit and then save changes and exit. Now, I don't know if you saw it, but when it did complete the boot process, it told us the IP address that we're going to access our Proxmox web UI. So let's switch over to our computer. That was it. Okay. So Proxmox has booted. We don't really need it. We don't need to interact with the machine itself. So we can go back to our desktop and just search it. It's going to tell us that we don't have HTTPS. So this is okay. This is a self hosted service. Yes, accept the risk and continue. And then we need to log in with the password that we previously created. As you can see, it was root. That is just the default um, main user for all Linux systems. And then the password that we set in the installation. Uh, it's, it's okay that you get prompted. You're going to get prompted every time you log in saying that you do not have a valid subscription. That's okay. We're not enterprise people. We're, we're doing this for personal use. Okay, so now that we have the Proxmox dashboard, we should just need to configure uh, Proxmox to install our virtual machines and blacklist the drivers. Um, let's make a couple of configurations. You see Proxmox by default comes with repositories that we can't update from unless we have a enterprise subscription. So we need to make changes. So for this, we're going to open up the terminal. Oh, okay. Yeah. We're going to open up the terminal and we're going to SSH into our Proxmox install. So if you remember the main user was root and then the local IP is going to be 192.50. Oh, well, this is local to me. Sorry. Like this IP is going to be unique to you as well, depending on your home configuration. So this is the I, local IP to access Proxmox. So we're going to SSH into it. And then we're going to log in with the same credentials that we use on the web dashboard. Now we need to make a couple of changes. We need to go to uh, nano or we're going to make an edit to a configuration file. So we're going to go nano etc apt sources dot list dot d pve enterprise dot list. 
So this is one of the configurations of like the sources that when we do an update is going to fetch from. What we want to do is comment this out by adding a hash sign or a pound sign. And we need to paste the following. So this will allow us to update Debian from the no subscription list. Now, in order to save it, we're going to do control O, enter control X. Now we need to make another change. We need to go now to nano etc apt sources list dot d and then ceph dot list and once again we're going to comment this out and we need to paste the following now i want to be very clear that this is not something that i made up i am going to leave a link in the description for the article which references which things need to be updated so this is the other link and let's add one more just for shits and giggles and control o to save enter control x to exit so now if we exit or oh my god <laughs> sorry i did not mean to exit so now if we go back home by typing cd we can just do apt update and apt upgrade and then yes so proxmox by default will not allow you to really update um, that's just one of the ways that they encourage people to get the license and if i was a business i would 100 percent get this license this license makes a lot of difference in terms of support and because they've done such a good job, I think it's worth it.